In the previous video, we designed a simple diode under steady state conditions. So now the next thing we're going to do is design a gallium arsenide photovoltaic cell. So let's get started. So a typical uh, PV cell would have the emitter and the base which is your PN junction. It would have a window layer, it would have a cap layer, often it would have a back surface field and it would have a substrate. Uh, these PV cells are usually grown on a substrate. So we're going to build a gallium arsenide one. You may have noticed actually that that would correspond to six layers. This is one of the limitations of PC1D. PC1D allows you to model only five layers. So for this purpose we are leaving out the back surface field. Uh, it is a limitation of PC1D that you can only have five materials but sure what can you do? So we're going to insert five regions. So up to device, insert region, one, two, three, four, and five. So we'll start with the bottom. So our substrate is going to be gallium arsenide, and it's going to be three micrometers thick. So again, click here, pick your gallium arsenide file, it's a material file, open up, everything should change for you. Handy. Um, yeah, so that is our gallium arsenide substrate done. Now, our back surface field, let me just check quickly, is going to be gallium arsenide and it's going to be two micrometers thick once again. Um, so two uh, and we want to change it to gallium arsenide so click on it again. So that's gallium arsenide. We want it end doped and we want the substrate end doped. So we want 10 to the 18 for the substrate and we want 10 to the 17 for the base and these should be n-type doping so better change them um, okay now so that's the base done now onto the emitter let me just double check the thickness of this region so we're going for 0 0.2 0 0.2 microns <laughs> It's going to be P doped gallium arsenide. And we're going to put it at 10 to the 18. And we want to change it to gallium arsenide now. Okay. So now onto the window layer. The window layer is going to be algas. That's going to be pretty thin. It's going to be 0 0.04 microns. And actually, uh, we're going OK so far. So 0 0.04 microns. And again, click here. So this time, instead of gallium arsenide, we're going to pick aluminium gallium arsenide. So click on it again and open it up and you can see your parameter has changed. Notice how the band gap of algas is larger than the band gap of gallium arsenide. That is important. And now our cap layer. A cap layer usually is to provide good metal good contact to um the circuitry um, so it's generally highly doped uh, 
as it becomes a better conductor then. So we're going to give it a p-type doping of 10 to the 19 and we're going to have it very thin. This is another limitation of PC1D. It, um, it does not usually the bit the the cap layer is mostly etched away besides what is connected to the metal contacts. So this bit here would actually be etched away and just the sides would be attached to the metal contact. Because if you look here, gallium arsenide has the same band gap here as the gallium arsenide in the emitter and the base. So that means absorption will happen here, but the collection probability is a lot lower here. So we don't want electrons and holes being created here. We want them to create it here. Uh, so that's why it is etched away, but unfortunately you cannot do that in PC1D. So we'll change the top region to gallium arsenide. And we'll open her up. Okay. So this is a fairly basic device we've just built there. Um, and now... So again, you can edit the whole characteristics of the device. Do we want surface texturing, surface charge? How it reflects. Um, relatively straightforward. You can play around with them yourself. Um, you can you can edit all them, all them yourself. Okay, so well, we might as well save that now. So we go file, save as. Gallium arsenide solar cell. I already have one of those, so I better call it two. And now that is saved. Okay, so now what we want to do is go down to our excitation. Now, let's let's edit some of this stuff now. So PC1D actually comes with a few excitation modes that are very handy. Uh, they're kind of default files because one does a voltage sweep, which allows you to get your um, your IV curve for your um, PV cell, which is handy. And the other one does a spectral sweep, and that allows you to work out your quantum efficiency or your spectral response of your PV cell, which um, you know two of the most important things that characterize a PV cell really is its quantum efficiency and its IV curve particularly is short circuit current and it's open circuit voltage. So we'll go up to excitation and now we can we can edit them all them ourselves so uh but I'm not gonna do that because PC one D already does it for you. So uh one sun ex dot exe which is an excitation file will open that up. And now we can see excitation from one sun. So the excitation mode is transient. So it's changing uh, with an associated time step. And uh, the default number of time steps is 16, which is actually quite low. We'll give it 100 time steps. Our temperature has actually changed now. So it's now 25 degrees Celsius, so it was 300 Kelvin. They're quite close, they're quite roughly the same, so I wouldn't really worry about that now. So now we have our base circuit and our collector circuit. So usually I just edit one, have one of them changing rather than both. Um, and I usually just stick with the base circuit. But you can change the collector circuit if you'd prefer. Now, so base circuit, we want is sweeping from minus 8 to 8. I want to expand that. I want to go from uh, minus 1 to 1. Uh, many gallium arsenide PV cells have an open circuit voltage of around 1. So if we're only sweeping to point 0.8 it's not really fair enough. So we'll change the steady state one to 
this is always the same as your initial. So we'll go minus one, two, one. Minus one to one. And now, we, as part of the one sun excitation file, it enables a primary light source. So we'll click into that to edit, see what's happening. So the intensity, or the power per area, is remaining constant. Uh, you can change that if you want. You can have it transiently changing with the associated time step, but I just want to keep the power constant. Yeah, and our spectrum now is from an external file. And I'll open them up. So there's a few, there's AM0, AM1.5D, and AM1.5G. So AM1.5G is the global, it is the um, the spectrum received on the Earth when you account for um, the light's path through the atmosphere. Um, so we're going to stick with AM1.5G. Also, you could do a black body temperature. Um, a, a black, we, you could assume our light source is a black body and give it a temperature and it will emit in a certain spectrum. So if you wanted to do the sun and you were assuming that it was a black body, you could put in 600 Kelvin and it will give you a spectrum pretty close to the AM 1.5G. Obviously, it is not as accurate. So you're better off using the external file. Or here, you could have monochrome and you could do a wavelength sweep there. But we won't worry about that now for a while. So we'll open up that. So now we're nearly good to go. So here, you can perform a single step of your um, of your time step. But I just want to run it all now. So we'll see our results here. So as you can see, um, this is our IV curve. You'll notice now that it's actually flipped. It's flipped on the x-axis and this is our power and this this is our power voltage curve and this is our voltage current curve. Uh, what you need to do now is you can copy you can copy that data copy graph data and you actually have to flip the x-axis. It's a bit uh, annoying but it's not the worst. I have to deal with it. Uh, I'm sure you can too. So and actually if you notice there the curves aren't intersecting the voltage axis at all. So we're not even getting a value for our open circuit voltage. You can see it's greater than minus one or one. Uh, less than minus one or greater than one. So we'll expand our range. So we're going minus 1.2. And we'll see what happens now. There we go. So we can see our open circuit voltage is about minus 1.1 or 1.1 yeah here we are open circuit voltage 1.06 and a short circuit current of 0 0.0138 and a max power out of 0 0.013 uh, you can tell now that it is not a very efficient device because our whole cell is one centimeter uh, squared and there is 0 0.1 watts landing on each centimeter squared so on the whole device there's 0 0.1 watts landing on it and then coming out from the device the electrical power is 0 0.0130 so that shows that this cell has an efficiency of about 13% which is uh, pretty low for a gallium arsenide cell um, which we shouldn't worry about too much it can be due to the
the region 1 being not etched away the cap layer let's see what happens if we really make the cap layer smaller um, and see if the efficiency is improved yeah here we go we can see the efficiency is improved quite significantly um, by reducing the thickness of the cap layer to 0 0.02 microns the efficiency of the gallium arsenide cell went up to around 25 percent which is pretty good which the the record at the moment is 28 percent uh, for an actual experimental gallium arsenide cell so not too bad uh, so you can see this is one of the limitations of PC1D the fact that you can't etch away our cap layer and we'll stop there